They call it coffee script combined. Take a sip, I know it's quite a trip. Cause somehow you can write less code. Get my time. Yeah. Come on and take a seat, don't end up obsolete. They call it coffee, coffee script. Coffee script. Yeah. Hi, I'm Greg Pollock, and you're watching a sip of coffee script, and this is the first level where we're going to be talking about variables and functions. But before we get into that, I want to take a moment to think about what makes words and text beautiful. There's something artistic about text when you put it together in certain forms like you see here. What makes it beautiful though? Is it the font? Using a specific font, is that what makes it beautiful? Is it that in combination with color? and design that makes it beautiful? Or is it the content uh, itself? In math, here we have some science. In science you have symbols. Would a mathematician look at this and think that it was beautiful? And lastly, we want to ask, what makes up a beautiful programming language? Well, in my opinion, it has to do with three principles. The first is the ability to write the least amount of code to get the most accomplished. It also has to do with readability and understandability, so that if I write a piece of code and I come back to it a month later, I can immediately pick up where I left off and I'm going to be able to understand it. Also, other people have to be able to read it and understand it. And of course, lastly, it has to be maintainable. Now, these three principles aren't always associated with JavaScript, the language. Um, JavaScript obviously has its good parts, but it also has its bad parts. Luckily, this is where CoffeeScript comes in. CoffeeScript, when we write CoffeeScript, it compiles into JavaScript. And CoffeeScript, the language, does follow these three principles pretty closely. And I think what you'll find throughout this tutorial is that it's a beautiful programming language. As we go through this tutorial, I highly recommend you check out the official CoffeeScript web page. It has some great documentation about the language. It'll help you through the challenges. Also on this page, if you click Try CoffeeScript, you'll get this interactive console where you can type in CoffeeScript on one side of the page and it'll show you the JavaScript that it generates. You see those icons there? Throughout this whole tutorial, you're going to see lots of code and next to the code, it's either going to have a coffee cup sometimes and a JS sometimes to designate whether what you're looking at is CoffeeScript or JavaScript. Later on, you'll see just CoffeeScript, and in that case, I'm going to put that CoffeeScript icon at the top of the page. Also good to know in case you look at the slides later. So let's take a look at our first CoffeeScript. Here you can see some code. If we ran that code, it would make this alert pop up. Okay, well, what's the JavaScript that this CoffeeScript is generating? It looks something like this. Two things to notice here. The first is that in CoffeeScript, we don't have to do any variable declaration. It all gets handled for us. Second thing to notice is that there's no semicolons in this code. We don't have to deal with those semicolons anymore. I know, weren't they a headache? There are two different ways we can declare functions in JavaScript. You've probably done it both ways. The first is by using named functions. It looks a little bit like this. Here we're declaring a coffee function. We can also declare functions in JavaScript using function expressions. They look like this. Both of these functions we can call in the same way by running just coffee parans semicolon. In CoffeeScript, it's only going to create function expressions for us. So let's take a look at the CoffeeScript code that generates this JavaScript down below. A couple things to notice about this code. First of all, you'll notice instead of using curly brackets, we are just indenting. We can either use two spaces, or if we want, we can just use a tab. But you need to be consistent. The next thing you're going to want to notice about this code is that little arrow. Well, that converts to the function parens curly braces, as you can see here in JavaScript. And lastly, all of the functions that get generated for us from CoffeeScript are going to have a return value, no matter what, even if you're not using it it's always going to have a return value. What's convenient about that is you can assume that the last item in your function is what's going to get returned. You never have to use that return keyword. Let's take a look at that. So here we have a CoffeeScript function. It's going to create a confirm box, and then it's going to return your answer is whatever the answer is. The JavaScript it would generate is going to look like this. Notice the return that got added. Now the return value in CoffeeScript we can write in a better way using an interpolated string. So here you can see we say your answer is answer. 
it's going to get converted to the same code in JavaScript using the plus. To add function parameters, this is how we do it in CoffeeScript, and this is the JavaScript that it's going to generate. Pretty straightforward. Let's talk a little bit about how to call functions in CoffeeScript. So if I have just a single function that doesn't have any parameters, I can call coffee, just like that. If I have a function with one parameter, I can call it with or without the parentheses. The parentheses are optional. If I had two parameters, I could also call it with or without the parentheses. Let's call our coffee function, and then whatever returns, let's put that out into an alert like this. First, it's going to print out this confirm box, then it's going to return the string, and alert's going to be called on that string to print this out. If you take another look at this alert function call, you'll notice that there are still some parentheses here, even though parentheses are optional. This would still work without any parentheses, but it's sort of a best practice to use parentheses on everything but the outermost function call. So in this case, the outermost function call is alert. One nice feature about CoffeeScript is that it gives you the ability to do optional parameters. So what if I wanted to have an optional parameter of ready for some coffee as the message? Well, I'd write code that looks like this. Then if I call the function without any parameters, it'll ask ready for some coffee. And if I send in a parameter, it'll override the default and ask want some decaf. In case you're wondering, here's the JavaScript that this CoffeeScript compiles into. Lastly, I want to talk briefly about how to install CoffeeScript, which is completely optional for this tutorial, and give you some command line tools and talk about the TextMate bundle. So to install CoffeeScript, first you're going to want to install Node.js, so follow the instructions there. You'll then need to install NPM, which stands for Node Package Manager. Then you'll use NPM to install CoffeeScript. You're going to know you did it right if you can go to the command line and type coffee-h, which will give you all the commands that you can use to run CoffeeScript. If we ran this command from the command line, it would take that test.coffee file and it would convert it into JavaScript into a test.js file. If we were going to make a lot of changes to that file, if we were developing with it, we could add the w command here. What that would do is it would watch that file and every time it got saved, it would then recompile the CoffeeScript into the JavaScript file. If we had a bunch of files in, let's say, the source directory, we could run this command. It would look for .coffee files inside that directory. It would compile each of them into JavaScript files and output them, dash O, into the JavaScript directory. Lastly, if we were doing a lot of development with this code, we could add that W command, which would keep an eye on that source directory. Every time a single .coffee file was changed, it would compile that into a .js file into the JS directory. If you think you'll be using TextMate or Sublime Text 2 to edit your CoffeeScript, I highly recommend you install the plugin. Here's what the plugin does. So here you can see my CoffeeScript. I can write CoffeeScript, and then if I hit Command B, it's going to take that CoffeeScript, compile it into JavaScript, and show me the output, which is really convenient for debugging. That's all we got for level one. At this point, before you jump into the challenges, you might want to take a moment to download the slides. On the bottom right hand side of this page, there should be a link. You can click that, download the PDF, because you'll want to use them as reference to solve the challenges. Also, please don't be afraid to use the hints. They're there so that you can use them. So if you get stuck, let's say, for longer than, you know, 10 minutes on a challenge, you can't figure it out, use a hint or two or three so you can get to the next challenge and keep on progressing and learning CoffeeScript.